Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevin Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. All right, so today's topic is the Identity and Access Management System in CMS, and that is also the INA portal for CMS. We're also going to discuss the NPPES portal, which is another CMS portal. And then finally, we will do a quick review on the NPPES MPI registry. So um, as you see on your screen right here, this is the Identity and Access Management System. This is a CMS website. It's a CMS portal. And it is kind of the gatekeeper in order to be able to access the NPPES portal, the PICOS portal, and the EHR incentives portal. So this is the place where everything happens when it comes to setting up your profile, when managing your profile, your contact information, and we'll go over that in just a second. So um, like all CMS websites, you have to agree to the terms and conditions to move forward. And I have my username and password stored on this computer because it is um, a private computer but um, there are other things on here we're not going to go over to help with some um, quick reference guide frequently asked questions definitions of roles we're not going to go over all that today but I do encourage you to look at that read that understand the roles so if somebody is working on behalf of you and they request to work on your behalf in all of these portals or any of these portals, then you want to understand what you're granting them permissions to. So we're going to go ahead and sign in. Uh, they changed the title of delegated official to access manager throughout this INA portal. So they just want you to acknowledge that you understand that. But to my understanding, the permissions are the same, just the title changed. And my understanding and in my experience, the access manager pretty much has, like it says, access to manage everything on behalf of an employer. So we're gonna go ahead and click I understand. And this brings you to the home page. And you have four tabs here. You see the home page, and this is where any pending providers that you've requested to work on behalf of them, whether it's an individual provider or a group, then it would be here if it hasn't been approved or denied. And then your surrogates, like I said, again, we're not gonna go over these definitions, so you definitely wanna make sure you look those up and what that means to you. And then uh, on the right-hand side here, you have a link for news and alerts, and then you have the other application links that your same user login credentials that you use to log into this website will also work on. So your login credentials will also work in the MPPES portal, which we're gonna review in a second. The PICOS portal, which we are not reviewing today, I will do that in a separate video down the road, and then the EHR incentive programs. And then down here, you can add a connection, you can add a staff member, and you can add an employer if you just wanted to do that really quick. In my experience, it is easier to request access to an employer or group than it is to wait for them to initiate it and you to receive something. So I use the add employer function a lot. Um, I'm not going to click on the my profile because it has my personal information there. But like all, you know, government websites, in order for you to get a portal access, you have to give them pretty much everything and your firstborn child. So it has, you know, my full name, it has my date of birth, it has my contact information, my address, uh, the best email that I use, and it's where you can reset your password. It also lists all the employers that you're working on and what roles you are for those employers, the status, if it's active or inactive. So it will show you past ones or ones that have been rejected or disassociated. And it also will tell you if you have access for those employers to each individual portal listed here. So they can grant you access individually kind of a la carte to each thing. So if you have someone that wants you to manage their PICOS, but they don't want you to manage their MPI, then they would only grant you access as a user and your role under the PICOS and nothing else. So there's like these columns 
for all four portals and there's check boxes if you've been approved for them and then it will tell you if you haven't been for the others. So that's really helpful too if you're having trouble logging in or finding an employer that you think that you're associated with and you can't find them, you would wanna log into the INA system to see if you've been approved to work on their behalf in that specific portal. And the one thing that I like to tell people about this portal is that this is your personal portal to be able to access things for employers. So if you're working at a company and you have your company email address associated with this portal, then that's the email address where your notifications will go when an employer approves you. That's where your notifications will go when your password is going to expire, which is every 60 days. That's where your emails will go for um, being locked out and needing to reset your password. So if you're going to leave an employer and you want to keep this to be able to access for future employers and future providers, then you wanna go in and change that email address to something that you use personally so that you're able to go back in. So, you know, the, the providers, the employers, the groups, they can disassociate from you in this, which is really nice. It's not like some of the other payer portals where it's specific to a tax ID number or MPI number. This is your personal thing and you can associate and disassociate. So that's just something to notate. You have my connections here, which is, um, helpful and then it also has my staff i again i'm not going to click on those for privacy sake for the people that i'm connected to and my staff but i wanted to just point that out to you and um the other nice thing that i forgot to mention under the my profile tab is that there's also an ad employer there and you can search for employers that are in the system in picos and mppes and you can send them an email to request you to work on their behalf so they get an email they have to approve it and then you get notified and there's something you have to do to finalize that connection if they want to disassociate it's really easy they just log into their ina portal their picos portal whatever and they disassociate you it's very simple so those are things that um people don't understand how it works and sometimes it gets delayed if you just tell a provider oh go find me in there and and add me because it can be faster that way, but to be honest with you, it usually takes longer because they can't figure it out or they forget. So in my experience, it's just easier to request it and have something go to them to approve it. So anyway, um, they also said um, there's a disclaimer or not a disclaimer, but an information little plug at the bottom of the ad employer that says if you're requesting to be an authorized official or access manager, which are two different roles that people can be assigned, for an employer and you are an approved authorized official or delegated official in PICOS, so if you're already approved in the PICOS for a specific doctor or group, then you can re your request will be automatically approved within 24 hours. So basically, if they've granted you access to PICOS, they figure they're gonna grant you access to the other portals too. So you kind of go to the head of the line and it gets done faster. So I just wanted to mention that. So anyway, when you're done in here, make sure always that you sign out just like you would any other website. So the other portal we're gonna talk about today is the MPPES, and that's the National Plan and Provider Enumeration System. I know a lot of words, but basically this is where everything to do with NPI numbers is created, managed, modified, what not, everything related to that, this is the portal. So um, you're going to go ahead, again, terms and conditions, it's a CMS website, you're going to accept it. Um, this makes it very obvious that you need to have an INA account in order to be able to log into this portal. And it tells you that here, and you can create or manage your account. If you click on this, it will take you back to where we just came from, the INA page, and you can create your account or you can modify it, change your password, whatever's needed. But if everything's good, like I just changed my password today because it had been over 60 days, I updated it so we can just go ahead and sign in. And this is our home page. And this is the National Provider System main page. So um, if you're applying for a National Provider Identifier, so a type one, which is just individuals, right? And a type two, which is an organization or a group, then you would do it here. It says, 
However, organization providers can have multiple MPIs. So even though individuals will only ever have one NPI and it will follow you your whole career throughout the country, you can have more than one MPI as a group or an organization. So just keep that in mind. So right here is if you are a provider and you need to apply for an MPI because you're just out of school or you've never had one because you've worked for a big conglomerate and they never build under you, whatever the weird case might be, then you would click on here and it walks you through and asks you all your information. If it was someone like myself who is going to be doing this on behalf of an employer, so on behalf of another doctor, provider, group, then I would do this. If it is you and you're the owner and you're starting your own practice and you need a group two MPI or you need to make changes to your existing group two MPI. So maybe you've changed locations of your practice. Maybe some of your contact information has changed. Um, you'll see when you fill that out, it asks you a bunch of different questions about your EHR system and your taxonomy. So if you add another taxonomy to your MPI or whatever it may be, anything that has to do with MPI or you know related to MPI, you would click here for yourself and fill that out. And then I'm not gonna scroll down much further because it will show the providers in which I have access to help them with their MPI management, but just know that this is all MPI related. So anytime, you know, a provider has a, or I'm sorry, an insurance company has questions about an MPI or whatnot, this is a good place to go and make sure that it was entered correctly from what was assigned to you. Um, honestly, I have used this program quite a few times and the MPI too is granted within like 10, 15 minutes if everything is filled out correctly. And you get an email to the email address they ask you where to send it, and then you keep that piece of paper because you want to be able to reference that. And then if you ever need to go in and modify anything, then you can go here to do that. What is connected to this portal is the MPPES MPI registry, and you do not need a login to access this. I would definitely bookmark all of these, but this one is the most important, this website. So make sure you're definitely bookmarking this. I will put the links in the description, um, but this is how you can search MPI records. So if you're setting up your billing system and you need referring doctors MPI numbers for a certain payer, or you need uh, rendering MPIs for a provider because they don't know what theirs is and they got locked out of the system or whatever it may be, you can search for group MPIs and individual MPIs and it's really, really nice. It goes really smooth. It's really fast. I've used it personally. I was getting labs done. Uh, I had Kaiser HMO insurance, but my PCP was outside of the Kaiser network because I had out of network benefits I utilized, but I wanted to get my actual lab work processed in Kaiser because I knew it was going to save me money. So I took handwritten orders to Kaiser and they needed the doctor ordering doctor's MPI number since she wasn't in their system. And I knew this resource. I looked it up on my phone. I gave them the MPI number and everything was good. So I was actually able to use it in my benefit as well. Um, so this is definitely something you'd even want to bookmark uh, for your front desk staff, billing staff, manager, credentialing. I mean, this is just helpful all the way around. So um, anyway, this is a very helpful tool. It's directly connected to the MPPES portal, so everyone that's registered there will show up in this registry, which is really nice, and it will have the most up-to-date information as long as people are updating their MPI information in the portal. So please share this with anybody whom you feel would benefit in your practice because this is a lot of information. Like I said, Picos we will do at a later date because that can be a long video in itself. Uh, smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful for you. Subscribe to my channel as always. I really appreciate it. And take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Get some more of that vitamin D. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.